Well, it's 6 a.m. I've actually had nine hours of sleep, but I still have a face like a kilogram of expired cottage cheese. And I'm a little bit annoyed because we've come back all the way to Abraham Lake because the forecast said it wouldn't be windy. It's windy. But even though it's windy, we're still gonna head down to the beach and hopefully get some good shots of some waterlogged trees. Shall we crack on? Let's go. Yeah. Let's, go. Let's go. But much to my delight, we managed to find a pocket of calm water right in front of some beautiful flooded trees. All I had to do now was find a killer composition and dodge this vampire bat. Well, we've made it down to the beach. It's a couple of days since we were here. I'm talking quiet because there's people camping right at the water's edge. In fact, there's a van that is uh, so close to the water's edge I think his tires might actually be in the water because this has risen significantly since we were here, what, two days ago? Yeah. And I would say it's possibly even risen since last night, which means that van owner over there might wake up to a surprise. <laughs> um, but it's, I wouldn't say flat calm. I mean, you probably can't see this. Can you just shine your light on the water there? Love? So maybe, maybe you can see the surface of the water there. It's quite calm. When we first got here, it was flat mirror. And then the wind picked up ever so slightly, but you may even be able to see over there. Can you shine it on those trees, love? Some beautiful trees over there, lovely cluster of them. And I just took a four minute exposure of those and it, it turned out okay, but I think I need to put the telephoto on and just really zoom in on a particular feature of that grouping. And then I'll do another, maybe a three minute exposure and I might get the shot. Now, obviously it's really dark, so I can't really show you uh, what's going on in the back of the camera. Oh, maybe, maybe I can. I'll, I'll give it a try. So hopefully you can see that. I couldn't actually show you the live view while I was setting it up because it was just too dark, but that is the shot that I've just created. And I really like this particular grouping of three here, or I like these three here. The trouble is if I push my camera more over that direction, it's kind of blocked by this other tree that's coming in from the right and it's covered in green leaves which I don't want I want this color so I might have to just get in the water so that I can get under the canopy of that tree to the right and shoot straight across at this one because that's where most of the color is enjoyed the shallow depth of field of this test shot, but I had a feeling that I could do better. I just needed to study the scene and look at the forms of the trees in an abstract way. And this cluster of colorful poplars was exactly what I was looking for. Okay, I, I have found an absolutely sublime shot. And I've learned today that this can only happen during twilight. I've got the moon and I've got the sun maybe 20 minutes from rising. The light is so soft and placid. And of course, the lake is totally calm. Let me just show you this shot. It's so tranquil. This is exactly what I was hoping to get on these now multiple trips to Abraham Lake. Have a look at this. So that is the live view. If I just put my finger in front of that, you can see that's live view. Just look at these reflections. Absolutely gorgeous. Loads of color, nice and simple exactly what I wanted. With that gentle wind on the water, the meandering leaves and the soft rippling on the surface, this composition was begging for a long exposure. These 
types of long exposures, the trick is finding the perfect shutter speed that captures motion blur in the water, but not too much in those lovely golden leaves. So now I'm gonna try a shot where you don't actually see that much of the tree trunk above the water. It's mostly reflection. It's kind of a, a cool look. Let me show you what I mean. So you're looking at the camera's live view, and again, <laughs> I'm shooting at Bano. Um, but what I've done is I've made maybe one fifth of the top of the frame, actually the trunk that you can see, but then the rest of the shot is pure reflection. And even then, you still get a lot of lovely color in that reflection. So I'm gonna take this shot right now. was exactly what I was hoping for. An image that encapsulates exactly how it feels to be in this place in this moment. It's the perfect splash of color and serenity to hang on your wall in a massive print. Get in touch. Yes, yes, I got the shot. I wanna scream and shout in joy and happiness. But there's campers over there. Do it on the inside. That shot is going to be printed eight feet wide yeah. and stuck on my wall. Oh, that is. Oh, that's a portfolio piece right there. You, do, you don't get to see that very often. You know, most of the time it's filler. I think it's okay if I say that I think that shot is a killer shot. I don't know if you can see this, I'll, I'll get the camera a bit closer, but you can actually see a submerged fire that somebody's built and the water has come way above that. So that might actually make an interesting shot. Certainly a cool foreground against all this color. I'll just get in a bit closer and see if it works. When wading into these waters, it's essential that you tread very carefully, lest you fall into one of the many holes. So after wading into the freezing cold waters, it didn't take me long to find exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, you guessed it, another pano. How could I resist that exquisite color palette of rich warm yellow on cold cobalt blue? This focus stacked image is probably my best selling panorama of all time, which will be available again in the summer as part of my pano print collection. So if you want to learn more about that, please join the mailing list. There's a link in the description. Well, I'm absolutely delighted with what I've got this morning and I'm slowly falling in love with this Fujifilm GFX 100S. And you know me, they're not, they're not paying me to say that and they're not even giving me a free camera to say that. It's hard not to fall in love with a piece of equipment that has helped you capture one of your best images of all time. Because once you create that emotional connection from a beautiful scene to a finished image, the thing that's in between is the tool that you use you know, the device that helps you to create that beautiful moment. And quite honestly, I've looked at the JPEG straight out of the camera from that favorite shot that I just got. And I don't even think I need to do anything. I admit I use Photoshop quite a lot, but that is the first image I've shot in years that I think is just perfect straight out of the camera, which just blows my mind. Here. Yeah. Yeah? Thanks, Fuji. Yes, yeah, thanks, Fuji. I think because of that... <laughs> <laughs> because of that emotional speech that I just gave you there, I think Fuji should just let me keep this camera 
and all three lenses. If you agree, please post a comment below and let Fujifilm know Gavin needs to keep this equipment, at least until the newest version comes out. Thank you. Well, now that I've got those shots, uh, quite possibly one of the best shots that anyone's ever created. Ever. Thanks, Fujifilm. Um, it's kind of windy. So I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to quit. There is a spot a little bit further down the lake that we scouted out the other day, which I got an okay shot from. So I might want to just go and have a quick look at that. And then if that's too windy, then I think we'll call it quits. But I'll be calling it quits happy with a memory card full of absolute bangers and that doesn't happen all the time as you know you know apparently you like to see my failures and there's been a few failures on this trip but it doesn't matter that one success is worth all of those failures and i didn't even need to get blistered to get this shot oh. how are you doing love are you reading your book there yeah i'm reading the book are you enjoying it it's taken me a month and i'm on page 111 and I don't really know what's going on. Might be time for a new book. If it's that, if it's that boring. Well, it's not really boring. I like it when I get into it. Yeah. But, you know, I get so easily distracted outside. Ooh, look at that color. <laughs> it's true, she does. Are you up for a stroll down to that other spot? Yeah. All right. Let's pack up. Oh, the two horses. Let's pack up and go and have a look. Maybe we can catch them today. Well, we've come back to a spot that I shot the other day in the hopes that the conditions might be better. Uh, but weirdly, it's not. Even though the water is calm, it's not quite as pretty as it was the other day. So we're going to call it quits and then go and get a massive breakfast and then move on to the next location. Where are we going? Who knows? All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the adventure and also that moment where I captured one of my best shots ever. I think we'll have to see. Yeah. I might get back and think it's rubbish, but I doubt that. I think it's a, I think it's a it's corker. It's a beauty. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.